Our next speaker for this morning is Dr. Michael Jones uh, from Impact Minerals. Thanks, Chrissy, and uh, thanks everybody for turning up uh, this morning. Uh, it's very bright out here, especially after the drinks uh, last night. And uh, I'd also like to thank Paydirt for organising uh, this uh, great conference, very well attended. And in particular, I'd like to thank uh, Namakala Nikazwe, who's here today on her birthday, who actually did most of the organisation before moving on to Pastors New, and a uh, very talented young lady. So uh, Impact Minerals, uh, story, we're actually uh, in the middle of a transformation, um, often happens in junior companies, as we've pivoted in the last 15, 18 months from uh, Eastern States focus to a WA state uh, focus. And uh, it uh, really offers a ground floor opportunity to, uh, to get in on the emerging uh, battery metal space, uh, given the large number of uh, projects that we've acquired and put together in that time frame. So I always like to show this uh, slide and uh, because impact has been around a long time. And it's important that uh, in mining and also in investment that uh, persistence is the, uh, is the key. And um, I just want to uh, assure people that uh, although I looked like that when we started and some days I feel like this, I've just got the same amount of enthusiasm uh, as uh, we did on day one. And that's partly because of the great team that we've got. Um, we've got James Cumming, my exploration manager in here. We've been able to hire some very talented young geologists recently and it's really rejuvenated the company. And I think uh, we're going to be in for some exciting times over the next uh, couple of years. So uh, the key to that persistence is also making sure you're in the right area. And uh, so one of uh, impact strategies over the years has been to acquire very large ground holdings in very prospective parts of Australia. And uh, we've demonstrated in the last 15 months, I think that we've been able to do that uh, in WA with our early stage projects. And we pivoted away from Eastern States by doing deals and we we're in the middle of rationalizing that portfolio. We have an $18 million joint venture with IGO uh, on our Broken Hill project. Uh, we've done a couple of sales. We've got about $600,000, $700,000 in shares in, in Genius from the deals that we've done. Uh, we have deals on the table for a couple of our uh, significant other projects that are left there. And so uh, I would say within another three months or so, we'll have that our transition um, will be complete. Uh, so as we said, we've been around for quite a while. 2006, we have 2.2 billion shares in issue, so plenty of liquidity. And um, uh, we've got about 2 million in the bank, market cap sitting there at 25 million. So as I say, uh, it's a ground floor opportunity to get in on some early stage projects um, across WA. We've always had strong support for the last decade from uh, major German shareholders, uh, private family office, and uh, also ABC, which is a subsidiary of Deutsche Balaton, which many of you might be familiar with, but they're big investors across the Australian resources space, in particular gold, and uh, emerging uh, developers and, and producers. And uh, look, share price has been languishing around about uh, one cent, one and a half cents for the last year, but uh, I think um, we're drilling at the moment, so we'll see uh, what that brings. So I'll just uh, go briefly to Broken Hill, only because um, one of the things uh, that uh, we've tried to do over the years is get major companies into joint venture into our projects, and are very happy to announce that we did the deal recently with uh, IGO. Um, this is Broken Hill, there's a scale 10 kilometres, and I've been accumulating ground there for about uh, 10 years, and uh, we completely surround the major ore body at uh, Broken Hill, 300 million tonnes, one of the world's great ore bodies. We're one of the largest ground holders there, and given that zinc um, hit record prices um, this week, um, I think we've got a good uh, chance of doing something with this ground. IGO have joint ventured in only into the coloured tenements here in blue and green on the east side of the tenement where there are some uh, particular mafic, ultra mafic rocks that have been well known to have very high grades of platinum group metals. And it was that that, uh, together with nickel and copper, and it was that that attracted uh, IGO to the, uh, to the project. So the joint venture, very simply, it's a, it's a big deal for us, $80 million over eight years, uh, six million in stage one to earn 51%, and then a further 12 to earn up to 75%. Um, they're in the middle of doing a, a deep uh, seated EM, uh, survey and uh, they're a specialist at this uh, obviously with Nova Bollinger they're doing a lot of work down the Albany Fraser and uh, they're certainly the experts in applying electromagnetic technology and uh, we announced recently they've actually identified a very significant conductor at the southern end of this nine kilometer long trend which is basically dripping with nickel copper uh, and PGEs and, and this is the prize um, this is a, a drill hole we did drill uh, some years ago 
Um, but this is what we're looking for. Uh, it's 0.6 metres, so it's not very really thick, but it's an ounce and a half of platinum and palladium. It's a gram and a half of gold. It's 15% combined nickel copper, ounce and a half of silver. It's got cobalt, and it's got one to two grams of the rare PGMs, rhodium, iridium, osmium, and ruthenium. And uh, you can count on the fingers of one hand where you get those kind of grades you know, around the world. So this is, if this had lithium in it, it'd be the perfect uh, battery, uh, uh, battery ore body. Unfortunately, it doesn't, but um, we'll see what happens. So the EN conductor's at the southern end here, and um, it's, uh, they haven't committed to it yet, but uh, I would say it's highly likely RGO will be drilling that uh, later this year. So something to keep your eye on. Um, I won't dwell on this, but one of the reasons they came to us is that we're the first people in 40 years of exploration to actually put together a coherent story about how this mineralization formed, where it came from, what the controls are, and, um, and we were able to demonstrate uh, what we'd learned um, with what we call a magic ratio, which basically pinpointed um, the first coherent zone of mineralization in that time frame um, about 15 months ago. And they're very channel-like structures, similar to Cambalda, which you've heard about over the last uh, day and a half. And just simply a very simple model. Um, we love models in, in impact minerals. Um, here's the EM plate. It seems to be in this major structure. And this is a very well known model, a very well used model nowadays. Um, that basically, um, deep in the throat here, you get um, uh, massive sulfide. And as it comes out, you end up depositing smaller amounts of uh, material um, in the flat lying areas outside, which we think explains most of this mineralization here. So we're very excited to see what's happening uh, deep in the throat here. As we, uh, uh, as we progress. Uh, so moving now to WA, uh, this is our gold project. Uh, just a couple of slides on that. We're waiting for drill results uh, from Dunia, which is located about uh, 35 kilometers east of the Burns discovery from the Froy. Uh, this is a, a unique discovery in this part of the gold fields. Um, it's got copper, gold, and magnetite. This is, this is from Burns. Um, very um, unusual mineral assemblage and very different to other deposits in this area. Seems to be related to intrusions, to porphyries, and we think that we've got a very similar thing here at, uh, at Dunia. Um, we had a logistically very challenging uh, drill program. We only managed to get six of uh, sort of 10 planned holes into this soil anomaly here. This is two and a half kilometers, so this is about two and a half kilometer uh, radius soil anomaly and um, some shallow drilling in the late 90s, got some weak gold. We've certainly intersected bismuth uh, in our handheld instrument, so hopefully um, we're gonna explain the bismuth anomaly and maybe some gold. And we think basically these little mag intrusions are sitting on top of something that's bigger and deeper and there's some sort of significant intrusion related gold system here. But really the, the big story is uh, what we've done uh, over the last 15 months, which has been put together this uh, package of um, uh, ground holdings. Um, we own the Arkin and Bow uh, projects here 100%. We've recently announced four joint ventures uh, with one particular group, Jumbo, Hopetown, Dalgaranga and Naria. And uh, we have other things in store, um, uh, nothing signed yet, but once those are done, um, our transition will be complete and we'll have about 3,500 square kilometers of ground in WA in this emerging province. And we decided to get into this area because of the discovery of Julimar. And uh, we identified some structures um, that are basically trending up to Julimar. Most people sort of went up and down the uh, east side. And that's uh, the reason behind the Naria project up through here. But uh, we ended up um, pegging this ground at, uh, at Arkham. So uh, Arkin, um, here it's sitting um, in, the, um, in the wheat belt near Corrigan, and uh, we announced this on a Friday morning, and on this Friday afternoon, Anglo-American came in and staked 10,000 square kilometers uh, all around us. So it was quite clear they'd been thinking of acting, um, and, uh, and we pit them to the post, which I think we took the eye out of uh, what they really wanted um, over that major structure. They're undertaking a big $3 million uh, airborne EM survey as we speak, and we're gonna be tagging on the back of that survey um, in the middle of this year. Um, so uh, numerous magnetic anomalies uh, through here. Julie Mars, this is a Julie Mar, this is about two kilometers through here. There's 10 million ounces of palladium there. And this whole region is sort of littered with similar magnetic anomalies that have never been explored. Um, Bo is one of our standouts. We've just been able to complete follow-up soil sampling here. And um, uh, those results will be out in a couple of months. Um, so plenty of scope to, uh, to basically find a repeat. So <clears throat> these are the results of our soil sampling. Uh, we identified uh, 15 targets um, using some new geophysical technology and uh, we were very surprised. We ended up uh, getting uh, a very high hit rate and six sort of priority areas for nickel, copper, platinum, palladium and gold. So this is just a colored image that's basically summing up um, which are the, uh, the anomalies for those particular elements. 
And um, they're, they're of considerable size, so that's about 2,000 square kilometres in that map. And then this is just a close-up showing the results um, in more detail over uh, N1, our priority target. And those circles are about 100 metres apart. So these anomalies are 600 metres long, 300 metres wide, they're open in all directions, and there is not a single drill hole into any of this terrain at all. So uh, it really is virgin, uh, virgin territory. And a second area here, much broader areas. Uh, these are gravity images, by the way, so um, dense uh, materials shown in the yellow, and uh, they're probably uh, the mafic rocks, um, which are the hosts that we're looking for. We had a very pleasant surprise, and also uh, what drove us to acquire other ground in the areas that we also identified by chance um, significant lithium anomalies. Um, again, six priority areas here. You can notice that they're sort of antipathetic to the uh, to the nickel copper. Uh, and again, same story this time on the magnetics, but um, probably not quite as clear. But the little circles there are 100 metres apart, so we've got widths of many hundreds of metres um, of um, again totally unexplored um, terrain. And there's not even any lithium uh, work uh, ever done here at all. So um, on the basis of that, um, we actually did a, a number of these joint ventures. I'll show you one here, which is Jumbo. Jumbo is adjacent to, um, to Arkin, and it's an 80-20 joint venture. All of the, the four joint ventures we did uh, are 80-20, 20% 20, 20 free carry to a decision to mine, <clears throat> and all, that, all of them only cost us $60,000, so it was a great deal. And, and I've shown here, we also identified some significant uh, rare earth anomalies, heavy rare earths. There's three here at Arkin, two at Jumbo, and, uh, and Jumbo is also a standout uh, rubidium uh, in soil anomaly. So uh, there's plenty of work to be done here. One of the issues working in this part of the country is land access agreements with uh, the landowners. Uh, we've been working through that. Uh, got our first ones across the line at Bow uh, to the north. And so we've just been able to complete follow-up soil sampling before the cropping season starts or the, the sowing season. And uh, we've just signed up uh, deals for these targets here. So we'll be on the ground um, hopefully in the next week or two uh, doing the follow-up work there. Um, oh, sorry, there was the, uh, a picture of the rubidium uh, target that we've got there at Jumbo. It's absolutely enormous. Uh, and just to finish off with, we're drilling at the moment at Hopetown, again, one of our joint ventures, uh, some geophysical and geochemical anomalies. We're looking in particular for uh, copper, silver, gold at uh, Silver Star and Top Notch. We think we're at the southern extension of the Ravensthorpe Greenstone Belt down near the coast. Um, you heard Mount Catlin mentioned in the previous talk, and um, our active lithium mine, there are dormant nickel mines, there's the Cundit uh, Copper Gold and Trilogy uh, Lead Zinc deposit here, and we think uh, we've got most of the southern extension of that belt on the other side of this major structure. And again, uh, hardly any drill holes here at all. Um, and so we were the first people to sort of uh, put a diamond hole in here and we'll move to Silver Star and get to these other uh, targets later in the year. So look, lots happening. Um, oh, that's uh, just a cross section from, uh, from Hope Town, which I won't dwell on. So lots happening. Uh, I'd like to think we've done a, a, a great transformation of the company um, and in the last 15 months. We've rejuvenated. Uh, it's a ground floor opportunity to get in to a wide range of, uh, of battery metals, and uh, you can look forward to some very strong new slow over the next uh, couple of years. So thank you very much for your time.